Hello and welcome back to Simply Solo Playthroughs. We are here once again with Imperial Assault, learning how to play. This is tutorial number three, episode number four of the tutorial thing. If I'm right, I think we'll be able to get through this particular one without any problem. So we're going to go on ahead and go over here, start recording. Three, two, one. We will load our game. First squad. The Yaman 4 Rebel Base is under assault. You have just slipped in through the door to the base and closed it behind you. When your comm link receives the call, Calling all soldiers, this is Lieutenant Talcum. Talcum. Talcon. Not Talcum. <laughs> in the command center. Okay, sorry, but you know, it's kind of doing a funny voice. Uh, <clears throat> we have nearly finished loading to remaining transports. We need just a bit more time to launch them. Hold your positions just a little bit longer. This final tutorial will address the rules not covered by the first two tutorials. After you complete this mission, you will be ready to embark on your campaign. <coughs> Excuse me. The primary reference document for this tutorial is the Imperial Assault Rules Reference Guide included in your core set. Uh, words and bold text refer to specific entries in the rules and reference as well as the Legends Alliance rulebook which can be accessed through the rules menu which is right here somewhere. Oh, it's just telling us it's there. Okay. Gather the following titles for the mission. Now you find out why I have squad number two. Place the tiles 24B, 24B, there we go, 36 Bravo, oh, 36B, okay, and one door and that's it okay so we have this one this is my extra one for holding the door doesn't fit very well I wonder why I think it's this piece okay and we need the door which is right here okay continue you stand near the door that just rolled under in order to escape the Imperial forces outside. Place Jane Odin by the door. And I forgot my figures. You, you, no, yes. Jane goes there. Jen, Jane. Place Gargan as indicated. Continue. Each player takes one hero sheet, full color side, face up. And the hero's class cards, which only the starting weapon is face up. Continue. The room is mostly stripped bare of anything useful, but a couple of crates remain behind, forgotten in the rush. That's what I was going to do with my day off. I forgot about that. Okay, so we've got crate one. Oh, and the other crate's over here. The sound of the blaster fire impacting the base door echoes through the room. You ready your weapons and prepare to face the Imperial forces head on. After several moments, the blast stop, leaving you tense and silence. Okay. So we have, let's see, we've got like this, 18. Guess where the bad guys are gonna come from. Oh, that actually goes there. 
Didn't know that. Okay. So there's 38. I, feel like I should be playing on a harder surface. Okay. Yeah, there's three layers here above the pool table. In case you don't know, I'm playing on an old pool table. On the bottom, there's a, a yoga mat, which I'm probably going to take off. And then I have my uh, cutting board for print and play stuff. And then I have mouse mats. Continue. Through the hole in the wow. door, you see a squad of stormtroopers gathered outside. Two of them stand back, weapons at the ready. While a third has pressed up against the side of the structure to clear of blasting charges. Oof. So here we go. Let's get some stormtroopers out. And we'll get the purple, purple, and purple. So we have one here. We have one here and one here. And we're going to sign up purple. Confirm. Round one. With ferocious battle war, Garkin charges towards the open door and the stream tapers behind. Garkin will activate first for demonstration purposes only. Some heroes have a special ability indicated by the up arrow icon indicated on the list on their hero sheets that provide them additional options during their activation. Each special action can only be used once per activation. So I can use it twice per turn. So there's the card and there's the special activation. Continue. Garkin has charge action which reads Move a number of spaces up to your speed, then you may perform an attack with your weapon. This ability requires that Garkin spend an action, spend an action, and suffer two strains indicated by the strain to perform. Oh, I guess I probably shouldn't have used strain last time. <laughs> I got ahead. I kind of like I've been watching and reading a whole bunch of stuff on this, so. I don't know where I'm going on this. Um, if Garkin had a three, okay. Up to its endurance, for example, if Garkin had a three or a four strain on the hero sheet, he would could not use this charge ability. Place two strain tokens on Garkin's hero sheet to use Garkin's charge ability. Move Garkin adjacent to two stormtroopers farthest from him so that he can take advantage of his vibro axe cleave ability then perform an attack with Garkin. Move, hold up, where do I want to move him to? Move Garkin adjacent to two stormtroopers farthest from him. Oh, I see what he's going to do. Okay. So the door is gone. Using the charge ability only took one of Garkin's actions perform okay, so we're gonna do our action. One, two, three, four. And we are going to hack away. He has the vibro axe, not the and we want to be able to use cleave. So we have red, yellow, and no stormtrooper cards. Uh, Imperials. Stormtroopers. And yes, I made a extra box just for... And they have a blue, and a green, and a black. And she has two greens, as I recall. And he has... His where's fiber lax go? Oh, there it is. Okay, red and yellow. Okay, so we're gonna go on ahead and do his first action. Okay, 
that stinks. I did not get a extra surge, so I'm not going to be able to pierce. <clears throat> oh, and I guess I was attacking this guy. So this is out. Range accuracy does not matter, so there's three damage. They only have three health, so he is out. And then now Garkin is going to take a second attack and he's going to go after the other Stormtrooper. Oh, look at that. But I have a Surge. So I can use Pierce to go through one of these. So that's two. So that's only one damage to the Stormtrooper. Okay, continue. And Gorkin's activation. Okay. Some hero abilities are able to interrupt the normal flow of the game. Jen Odin's uh, quick draw is one such ability. It reads, too strained to use the start of a hostile figure's activation. Interrupt to perform the attack with a pistol targeting that figure. Limit once per round, twice if you have two activation tokens. Continue. With quick draw... Then can interrupt an Imperial figure's activation, perform an attack by suffering two strain. She can only do this once per round, as stated in the ability's text. During rounds when Jen has two portraits shown in the app, which is the app equivalent of two activation tokens, she can use quick draw twice. Nice. Jen is a perfect position to quick draw on the closest stormtrooper. Place two strain tokens on her hero token. <clears throat> um, and perform the action against that stormtrooper. If you manage to defeat, remove it from the map. It does not get to finish its activation. Okay, so use at the start of a hostile figure's activation. Interrupt to perform an, an attack with pistol targeting that figure. Okay. So we have two greens. He has a Schwartz. So we have, he'll miss a surge, and we have just two damage on this one. Okay, that was not as good as I had hoped. <sighs> Bummer. Okay. Continue. If Jin managed to do at least one damage to the stormtrooper, she can now use her opportunist to move one space. Since Opportunist does not have a strain cost listed for it, it does not cost a strain to use. Then finish the activation for any remaining Stormtroopers. If Jen and Garkin manage to defeat the entire group with the Stormtrooper, activation ends and it becomes the hero's turn to activate. Okay. Well, that didn't happen. Oh, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to... We're going to take an opportunist attack. Move three to attack in a healthy river that has suffered at least one. Move two to reposition four. Move six to reposition four. Okay, Jen is just going to back up by one. Okay, move three to attack the healthiest, healthy rebel that has suffered at least one damage. Nobody has suffered damage yet. So they are going to move... He's going to move back here to shoot and, um, and attack. So he gets ow, ow, ow. Okay, easily makes range. Has one surge. Priority. Pierce one for each other figure in the group. So they get one pierce. Oh, let's do this. 
exactly one pierce and they get don't need accuracy so they get another hit for the surge so that's one two three four five minus three so that would be two damage to Garkin And then the other one's going to do essentially the exact same thing. And that was probably kind of confusing how I did that. But it kind of made sense for video, being able to see everything. So that's that's kind of why I did how I did this. Okay. So we have a surge. We don't have to worry about accuracy. Point Blake Wayne, so if he gets a plus one. Plus two for the squad. Well, plus one for the squad. So that's plus two total. And does one damage. So he's going to end up. Do so these cancel this out. And that is just going to be one damage. Okay. So that makes it finish. A fierce looking animal climbs over the base's perimeter fence. Uh oh. Deploy a regular Nexu. The Nexu has a mercenary affliction, so its deployment card will have a green back with the mercenary icon on it. Figures with either mercenary or imperial aff oh, affliction affiliation are considered imperial figures. Place the next two deployment card on the table for reference. Okay. Mercs. Let's see what we have. I'm assuming it's a regular Nexu. Yeah. And. There he is. Continue. Oh, Nexu has a melee. Red and green and has six health. The Nexu has the mobile keyword on its deployment card. Mobile. Which shows it is allow it allows it to ignore terrain so the Nexu can move into and stop on spaces containing blocking terrain as it is doing here. Oh, that's convenient. The next one is also a large figure because it touches larger than a single space. There are two main differences between the large and small figures. Large figures cannot move diagonally. For example, a large movement, see Appendix 2 in the Rules Reference Guide. Oh, that's nice. Uh, when drawing line of sight, you may only from two adjacent corners of any one space it occupies. When drawing a line of sight to a large figure, you only need to draw line of sights to two adjacent corners of any one space it occupies. Okay, got it. Continue. The next who has the cunning ability on its deployment card. This ability gives it an extra block when it rolls an evade while defending. Be sure to familiarize yourself with the abilities that the Imperial figures have on their deployment cards when they are deployed. Remember that any ability that uses the word may or choose should be ignored when playing Legends of the Alliance. You can also ignore special actions indicated by one or more icons on the Imperial, Imperial deployment cards. Why well, I just call it enemy deployment cards? 
It is now our hero's turn to activate. Objective updated. Attack the Imperial forces until the last transport is away. Okay. So it's Jen's turn. Okay. Let's see. She is one, two, three away. One, two, three, four away. Eh, not bad. Um, and one, two, three, four, five, six away. That's not going to happen. She's going to... And there's no way she can get six damage, is there? No, there is not. Okay, so she's going to move one, two, and she's going to hold her, uh, her other two movement in reserve. And she will attack the close stormtrooper who has one damage. Next, who has a white? Okay. So we easily make. Oh man, we made the range, and we did do one damage. Um, she could do two damage, but it doesn't matter. He's out, and now she has two more movement. Oh, it's not going to let me go get the boxes regardless. Okay. It is now the hero's turn to activate. Objective updated. Okay. I said all that. <laughs> okay, so. Two more movement. She's going to do this. And hide behind the wall. Even Garkin out there standing by himself alone. That's really nice. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of her activation. The next two has a bleed keyword on its deployment card, which allows it to give the bleed condition to figures it damages with its attack. Conditions like bleed are lasting effects. When a figure gains a condition, place a token for that condition next to the figure. Each condition has a reference card that describes its effect, including the way it is removed. Some conditions like bleed, stun, are harmful in, as indicated by the trait on the condition and their purple color. Others like focus are beneficial and are colored green. Supply, stun, bleeding. Guess we'll just take that one out right off the bat. Okay. Some weapons and deployment cards have surge abilities that apply conditions. For example, the Royal Guards from the last tutorial had a surge ability, Stun, which such ability is used if the target suffers at least one damage during the attack and that condition is applied either to the target of the attack if the condition is harmful or to the attacker if the condition is beneficial. The Nexo is not required to spend a surge to trigger its bleed ability, but it must do at least one damage to its target in order to become bleeding. Garkin's Rage ability allows him to gain focus condition, which when he suffers three damage during a single attack, a figure cannot gain a condition that he currently has, as Garkin cannot use Rage if he is already focused. Perform the next Nexus activation now. Remember that the Imperial figure can perform one action 
icon each activation. So the stars can only be done once. Okay. At the start of this activation, if Rebel is bleeding, that figure gains plus one damage. Okay, pounce. Place the figure in an empty space within six figures. Within six spaces and adjacent to two or more rebels. Then attack the rebel that has suffered the least damage. Okay. One, two, three. So he's going to move one, two, three. And that will allow him to be adjacent to Gorkin. Congratulations, because he cannot make it to Jin because Jin is undamaged. Yeah, he cannot make it to uh, Jin. <clears throat> so. I think I forgot to reposition the rebel troopers afterwards. Oops. It's not going to make much of a difference, especially if this guy is bleeding. Okay, so he is going to attack Garkin. Fortunately, he only has two dice, so that's actually a good thing. But we have four damage, two block, and one. Here's two. That's out. So that's four damage. One, two, three, four. And we need the bleed. And there's our bleeding condition card. During the activation, after you resolve the action other than the action listed below, you suffer one damage. Discard this condition. Oh, it looks like you're... So... Oh, I can use an action to, to stop bleeding. Well, that's nice. Okay. During your activation, as you resolve other... Oh, okay. Oh, so if a rebel is bleeding, he, Gark, this thing gets another extra damage. Okay, so that's the end. Okay, and then move three to reposition three. So, one, two, three. Right. One, two, three. Yep, that, okay, that's fine right there. Okay, so that's the end of Gherkin of... Uh, no. Finish. Sometimes a hero just needs to move a space or two to the next crate. Next to a crate or get a line of sight on an enemy which makes a move action less than ideal. Heroes always have the inherent ability to suffer one strain to gain one movement during the activation. They can do this twice per activation. This is an invaluable tool for saving a hero's actions for more important uses like attacking or interacting. That's good to know. I did not know that one. With the many abilities that require suffering strain, heroes can quickly find themselves with strain equal to their endurance. To remove this strain, the heroes need to perform a rest action. When a hero rests, that hero removes all strain from its hero sheet. Important, this app changes the rules for resting from those presented in the rules reference guide. Resting in Legends of Alliance does not allow a hero to receive damage. Recovering damage will be discussed later in this tutorial. Continue. There is one other way heroes can remove strain. When the hero is attacking, the hero can spend one surge result to remove one strain from its hero sheet. This can be done even if the attack misses. A hero can only do this once per attack. That's fair. Oh, so it's Garkin's turn.
What do we want to do? I am going to take out the other stormtrooper. I am very much of the opinion that fewer people attacking me is a good thing. Okay, so that gets rid of a surge, but that does one that does more than enough damage. So he's out. And one, two, three. Okay, Garkin is going to use his charge ability again. One, two, three, and do an attack. Which next only has a white die, so he can actually dodge the whole thing. And gets rid of one surge, one block, but that still leaves two damage. And we can do a pierce. That's going to give three damage. And that's the end of Garkin's turn. So. Okay. She is going to. One. Two, three, four. Oh no, I really messed up. Yeah, that's going right through him. She has to be right here. One, two, three, four. Oh, her speed is five. Excellent. Five makes it and for one action and then shoots for her second action. That goes back there. These go here. This comes out and this comes out. Okay, we easily make the range on this one. Accuracy on this one. There are no surges in play. It does have one block and gets three more damage. One, two, three. That's six. That is six damage total. And that's the end of our next zoo. Okay, and end Jane. Jin. An officer strides through the gate. Deploy an Imperial officer. Uh, an elite Imperial officer. Elite figures are stronger versions of the regular figures and use a deployment card, a red deployment card, instead of a gray deployment card. Note that this Imperial officer has three bonus health indicated by plus three on its icon. Well, let's just say I'm glad he didn't have a plus three. Okay. So I'll reach over here. Imperial officer. And he gets a blue and a yellow. And defense a white die. Okay. And Pretty sure these guys are over here. Defeat the Imperial Officer. Continue. Oh, how convenient. We're going to have a probe. Multiple probe droids. Saw that one coming. A regular probe droid.
I'm guessing that's going to be our next one. And we will get a purple probe droid. Deploy a probe droid regular assign its color. Oh, I'm guessing everyone's coming in here. And the blue. Minor peril. The stress of battle is beginning to take its toll. Each hero suffers one damage. Peril effects, imp effects and imperial abilities can cause heroes to suffer strain. If a hero has more strain placed on his hero sheet than endurance, any strain is taken as damage. Okay. Continue. Round two. At the end of the round, you may roll one red die. Each adjacent figure and object suffers damage equal to the damage results. Then you are defeated. And has five health, as does the Imperial Officer. Can we do five damage? Oh, but I can just sit there and take two whacks at him. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So, blue, yellow, yellow, and a black die. Here we go. Ugh. Only two damage. I'm going to try again. And only two damage this time. <sighs> Not good. Okay. And Garkin's turn. This is not going to be pretty. Imperial officer. Imperial officers prefer for others to do the fighting for them. To this end, this a figure will attempt to order another imperial figure to attack the rebel closest to itself. If there is no eligible figure that can take the attack, that rebel use of targeting priority to pick the next best target. If no other imperial figure can perform an attack, skip the instruction. The Imperial Officer has an instruction preceded by a... Oh, down at the bottom. Okay. This symbol indicates that this instruction does not require an action, and so the instruction will always be performed. Cower, if not within three spaces of Rebel, recover three. Oh, good. He's within three. So this instruction will always be performed if its conditions are met. It does not count towards the two action instructions that the figure can perform during its activation. Okay, order. Costs a six or less and attacks the healthiest rebel closest to this figure. That's gonna be Garkin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But he has a plus 10. So that's um, 16 that he has to give. And the probe droid attacks with three dice. Not good. At the end of the round, you may... Oh, good. So it's not required. Whew, that's good. 
Okay, so we have one damage, two damage, two block, three, four. Continue. So he gets a plus one damage and gets to recover one. Great. And one dam so one damage basically goes over here. Okay. Move move three to attack the rebel that has suffered the least. Move three to attack the rebel that has suffered the least. So he's going to move one, two, three. And he will attack with a blue and a yellow. And we'll attack Jen. Oh, that's not good. He gets two. Let's take a look at priority. Plus three actually doesn't matter. Focus. And a stun. Great. And Garkin forgot to take a damage from being bleeding. Okay, so he gets a focus. When you declare an attack on a tribute test, attribute test, add one green die to pull after resolve an attack or attribute test, you must discard this card. Stunned. You may you cannot attack or voluntarily exit your space. Okay, if within three spaces of a rebel, okay, cower. If not within three spaces of a rebel, recover three damage. He doesn't have any damage and he is within three spaces. So finish. And Jin. She's just gonna turn and shoot him. Okay, so one block, one surge gone, two damage. So one, two, three, four, five. He takes one, two damage. And she's going to flat out shoot him again. One surge is gone. However, that gives us three damage. So the Imperial officer is gone. That may not have been the best move. Because these guys are still alive. <laughs> and kicking. But he can't order him around next turn. So, the last transport is preparing to depart. Lieutenant Calcum reports via comlink. Grab your supplies as you can and head towards your ships. Objective updated. Open the crates. Okay, her activation is over. Gains Pierce 1. Move 3 to attack. Garkin, the. So this is the purple one, which is right next to him. Boy, a lot of stuff gets out in this game. Okay. <clears throat> so he is next to Garkin. He has two yellows and a blue. Arkin has a black. Mmm. 
So we get rid of one surge. I don't think that's... Oh, look at that. One damage. Priority for surges. One more damage. That's two. Recover a... So one damage goes over here and one more damage. That ends that probe droid's turn. Finish. They have a speed of three, so I can easily outrun them. Sort of. Not really. Okay, we are going to, Garkin is going to take a wackadoo. Yeah, he's going to take a whack. Uh-oh. Not good. So that's three. Plus a, uh, so I can ignore one of those. So that's two damage. That's a total of four damage. And he's going to whack again. One, two, a couple of surges. So he's going to pierce and cleave. And that takes care of this guy. He's out. Right, purple, purple, okay. And that's going to, and then, nope, that's his, that's the end of his turn, because he didn't hit, I was going to move and save a move. Bonus, gain pierce one. Move three to attack Jin. One, two, one, two, three. And we'll be able to do so. Self-destruct if this figure suffered three or more damage. Ha <laughs> ha. Good. Um. If Revel Slap de defeat this fig, if any Revel, okay. Move two, reposition. Okay, so we're gonna move three, and he's going to come on ahead and attack Jen. And we get a dodge. Does not matter, he doesn't have any damage, so we can't recover. And can't inflict because he missed. Good job, Jen. Finish. Oh. And then he's going to move back out. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, okay, there we go. Which is going to be interesting because he's going to get whacked on again. Okay, so it's Jen's turn. One, two, three, four, five. I can't decide if I want to go. Problem is, I can't go and activate. But I also don't want him to have three point, just three points of damage. But I'm going to get another turn. And Garkin's one, two, three, four away. So he can take a whack at. So we are going to go on ahead and shoot the probe droid. Oh, I'm sorry. Black. Bad news. Plus one damage. So... With the surge, so that's a total of four minus two, that's two. That's actually kind of good. That ends Jen's activation. Round three. Okay, we're just trying to get out of here. One, two, three, four. And we are going to play whack a mole. Three damage. Come on. 
Oh, that is not good. Okay, so we have a pierce. That gets us two damage. That's still only four damage. Oh, man. Okay, that's the end of Garkin. And Garkin, thank you. Move three to attack, to attack the healthiest rebel, okay. He'll be Jin. That's the second time she's done that. Oh. Okay, so gain plus one pierce doesn't matter. That's only two damage. And priorities are plus one damage, plus a pierce, plus a recover. That's one damage, two damage. Finish. Oh, move four to re. One, two, three, four. We're just going to move him away. Flat out. Okay. So, J so now we have Jen. She's going to move one, two, three. And we're going to go on ahead and open this box. Create supplies left behind and scramble to evacuate. Hero can interact with, to open this crate. Remember, hero must be adjacent to the crate. So we're going to interact. You gain one med pack. Your med pack counts. Oh, that's nice. I like how that keeps track of the med packs. Uh, med packs are used for recovering damage. You will typically begin a mission with one or more med packs. You can find more med packs over the course of the mission. Med packs do not carry over in between missions, so you use them when you need them. After a hero performs a rest action, that hero can spend a med pack during that figure's activation to recover up to 5 damage, which removes that much damage from the figure. To use a med pack, select the med pack button highlighted below. Okay, perfect. Continue. Med packs are in short supply for the rebellion, so you better use them wisely. You need to achieve your goals quickly, or else you'll find yourself taking more damage than you can shake off. If all heroes are wounded during the mission, you will have to be extracted before you can accomplish your objectives, and the Alliance High Command will not be happy. Of course they won't be. Officers happy. So that's the end of Jen. He's going to move one, two, three, four, and we are actually going to use the med pack just in case he can get there. Would you like to recover five? Confirm. So we get rid of all of our strain. And get rid of one, two, three, four, five. And we get rid of the bleeding condition. All in one fell soup. So that's really good. Okay, that's the end of Garkin. Jin is going to move one, two. Open the med pack. Open. Interact. You found some useless supplies. The hero who opened this crate draws one supply card from the supply deck. Make sure the cards listed in step one from the section of the Legends of the Alliance have been removed from the supply deck. A supply card uh, provides a special ability for the hero. You gain 50 credits. Credits are tracked in the app and can be sent between messages to gain new cards. So I'm just going to draw one supply out. This, nope, that's a two supply. Marksman barrel, plus two accuracy. Ooh, nice. And that's gone. 
continue. With the last of your team comes aboard, the small freighter takes off and rockets out of the docking bay. Your ship comes alongside a medium transport, Freedom Fighter, and the two ships leave Yavin's Four atmosphere only to come face to face with an Imperial Star Destroyer. Fortunately, the Star Destroyer is already preoccupied hauling in another transport, allowing your ship and the Freedom Fighter to make their escape into hyperspace. This is the mission reward window. It shows you how much fame and how many credits you have earned over the course of the mission, as well as bonuses for finishing the mission. Sorry, excuse me. Finishing the mission. At the bottom are items for the Rebel to Alliance it has allocated to your team as a reward with your service. Select outside the mission reward window to close it. One XP class card. So Garkin gets survival gear. Okay, I'll have to figure out how to do this, but that's okay. Um, actually, my money is on it. It's over here. Survival gear. And put these back. Okay. And we are done. Thank you for coming. I hope you've liked and enjoyed this. I should have cut out that a little bit quicker. But thank you for joining us, and I hope you have an absolutely great day. And thank you for joining. And please make sure that you like and subscribe.